Hello, it's Bud. We've been discussing designing some stained glass projects and I've been looking at them from the standpoint of how they look with the carving bit and how much time it takes versus how they would look with the V-bit I'm using the 60 uh, and how much time they will take to carve and there's a dramatic difference uh, using the V-bit and using vectors and we're going to look at that it may not be the only way uh, I may take some steps that are unnecessary uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that I tried and why I walked away from that particular thing uh, and what I ended up with so I'll be right back okay I could have scanned something but I'm gonna play a different game at this point uh, I could have used somebody's pattern uh, but I'm gonna use word processing and I'm going to insert a picture from clip art I'm gonna look at people I'm going to search for a little girl that I saw earlier that I did my test with. There she is. So I'm going to double click on that. Come on. I'll be right back. Well, I got enough of them. I clicked on it enough times that uh, I couldn't see the other side of my screen. How about that? Okay, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click on Copy. And I'm going to Paint. And I'll be right back. There's my Paint screen. I'm going to Edit and Paste. And there's my little girl. Okay, I'm going to click on the paint can and I'm going to left click on white and right click on white so no, no matter which button I hit I'm using white paint and I'm going to just paint everything white that I can. I'll get rid of this, I don't want that. I'll run into a problem here. Uh, what I ended up doing was enlarging the picture um, by going to view and zooming uh, I'm not going to go through that step at this point uh, and I did the same thing with the feet and I just painted the inside of those white leaving the black line I didn't worry about the microphone uh, but that's what I ended up with and that gave me the second picture right here okay so I'll be right back okay there's my black and white picture and I'm going next I'm going to lower it don't have to but I'm going to maybe I won't I don't think it makes any difference. I'm just going to leave it that way. And I'm going to finish. And it wants me to save it. I'm going to name it test. And I'm going to replace the one I already have. So now I go get my pattern. And favorites. I'm going to run down and get test and bring it over. Uh, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to make it bigger just so I can see what's going on. <coughs> I'm going to uh, center it just for the heck of it. You know what? 
No. Now that will be a raster carve. <clears throat> I do believe. Uh, I have no opportunity to select a bit. So I know it's going to give me a raster carve. And I know from other stained glass projects that I've worked on so far, the Lion of the Lamb in particular, uh, they're raster carved. And I, I like them, but I would like a better line and like more control. I think I would have less cleanup and I would definitely have less carve time involved. So let's work with this thing and see what we want to do. Um, be right back. It really makes no difference whether this is inverted or not. It's just wherever I get my best picture, what I feel most comfortable with, so I can deal with it from there. Okay, and you can see that ends up right away with a okay so I've got it on invert so I don't have nearly as much to worry about okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some lines and I'm going to use the connecting lines and I'm going to start somewhere click and just roughly put these in where I want and I've got that portion drawn and if I come up here and uh, Where's the carving list? Oh, come on. There it is. Here's my carving list, and I've got those connecting lines. So I can see those. Okay. So now I can do some more connecting lines. Um, let me start here. come across and down and I've got that. I think I missed one up here uh, but it's just the idea of I'm going through all of these um, the cone or the microphone. I come up here and use a circle. And I can make it move around. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is not a true circle. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to do connecting lines. Uh, so here. And I can just go as far as I want on any given thing. Oops. Okay, so now I can set here on this line until I get that four-sided arrow. I'll right-click, come up here to form, do an arc, and I'm going to pull this right into there, move this in. Come over here, right click, form, arc, and that one went a little further out, so I'm going to bring it right back in. Here we go. I'll move this a little bit so you can see what's going on. Click here, I go to form, here's my arc, and then 
Sometimes they jump, but you can bring it right back. And I'll go through that whole process until I have outlined everything. What I do <coughs> is, see, I've got dotted lines, but I can't necessarily see all of them. But if I come up here to test and delete it, I can see what I've drawn. And then I can come back up here to edit and undo and bring it right back. So I can go between delete and undo and see what I've got. Once I have them all done, then I will come to test and delete. <coughs> I will come to edit, do a select all. I'm going to select my bit of 60. And depending on the size of your board and everything, uh, like I say, I, I laid this out on a 14 by 20, um, and it will size it down. Uh, depending on how small you make it will determine how deep you want to go. I tried a uh, 0.065, uh, that gives me a fairly fine line. Um, I tried a 125. Uh, which is a uh, eighth of an inch V uh, on larger boards that's okay it will not be okay uh, when you come down to like an eight inch board or something like that so you want to change the depth uh, to something probably a point one or a point zero something uh, but a point zero six five doesn't look bad Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use a, a point zero 0.07. And all of those things are now carved at that particular rate. I can see here now that this doesn't quite hit the cone. So I can move it. Uh, I can do a lot of different things. I can see I missed the line here. So I can come back up here and put that line in, the line segment. And again, I will have to do a select all and, and get my 60 degree bit and go through that whole thing. <clears throat> but when I end up, I will end up with my figure. Uh, I can put my box on, I can put lines uh, to make it look more like stained glass. Uh, but let me go get my end product as I left it, okay? Hold on. And here you see my end product. Um, and this particular one, I think if I looked at any one of these, um, it's a 125 on the depth. Uh, that's the only thing it would be to select all uh, as you pick out your wood and set the depth of everything to uh, what depth you want. But 0.125 is probably uh, the most you would ever want to do it. And that would be on a large board. Now, when I did this without the outer box and using a 0.065, uh, and I had probably a um, ten and a half inch board. Um, this little girl took about seven and a half minutes to carve. When I increased it to a point one two five on the depth and added the outer line, I went from that seven and a half minutes to fifteen minutes. Each line that you put in it has to take a little bit of time. And the depth uh, also eats up some time as well, uh, just so you know. But it's a fun project, and I save mine uh, in special files and folders, folders um, so that I know where they are and I can come get them whenever I want. And that is how I design my first personal 
stained glass project as a test. I hope that helps. Talk to you later.